I never really like telling people the real story behind how I crashed. All right, what's going on everybody? How you doing? Hope you guys are having a great day. Um, I am Husky Hooligan. Sounds kind of crazy to hear, right? Like you've been gone for so long, like where you been? <laughs> so obviously this is a different video than what I'm used to recording. Um, you guys used to see me hop on the supermoto, stick the GoPro on the helmet and just do wheelies, right? That's what I used to do. As much as I enjoyed making videos back then and riding motorcycles, motorcycles to me were so, how do I put it? It was so like spontaneous in my life, right? Like I basically, my dad got a motorcycle. I thought it was super cool. And then I got a motorcycle. And so I've always wanted to do like social media stuff and or like filmmaking, stuff like that. But I never really knew what to record. And so when I got the motorcycle, uh, motor vlogs were just kind of building up like right when I started doing them. Um, really was like the perfect time for me to start doing it. And I had fun with it for a while, but I think they just kind of, maybe I'm wrong, tell me in the comments, but it really seems like Motovlog just like fell off. Um, people that do Motovlog still, they've kind of moved into more like vlogging stuff, um, more lifestyle content. Basically when I was doing the motorcycle vlogs, I didn't really think it was something I could maintain for a long time. Um, I always did it for fun. You know, I definitely, people always say like, oh, don't, you know, try and make videos and do YouTube for the money, right? Like you want to do it because you enjoy it. Um, which is definitely what I did. You know, I did enjoy motorcycles. I love doing wheelies. Everyone loves seeing the, the crazy videos of people doing wheelies, getting back as far as you can, trying to scrape, stuff like that. But uh, as much fun as I had doing it, it just wasn't something I could maintain for just a long time, really. But that's actually, that's not why I stopped. Long story short, uh, if you guys saw my video a long time ago, uh, I've already made all my videos private just because I'm changing my channel to something completely different, but I had a video a long time ago and the title was I Crashed. I believe it was around May 15th, uh, 2017, maybe it was 2018, I'm not sure. But uh, I had a major accident doing a wheelie. I never really liked telling people the real story behind how I crashed. Um, believe it or not, I actually had a lot of people, uh, once I told them the real story about why I crashed during the wheelie, they literally told me that like, oh, I deserved it. And, and you know, doing stuff like that, it's inevitable. You know, you're gonna crash and, and you're gonna get crazy hurt, which is true. You know, you do stupid stuff, you're gonna crash, you're gonna get hurt. It happens. I never really liked telling the real story. Obviously, for you guys YouTube, I'm gonna tell the real story. So, basically, I was going down a frontage road uh, next to a highway, so it was not on the highway, but those little single lane roads, uh, you know, that go next to a freeway. There wasn't many people on it. There were some people behind me, nobody in front of me, but they weren't like right on me, right? So, I was doing a wheelie um, on my enduro bike. So, let me back up a little bit. So the bike that I crashed on was a Husqvarna FE 501S. So when I bought it, it came as a dirt bike or enduro, right? So it came with headlights, taillights, and then it came with 21 inch dirt wheels and tires. I never really did any dirt bike riding when I was a kid growing up. So I swapped those over to a supermoto setup, which were 17 inch rims, I believe. So basically long story short with the whole supermoto setup, when you change your wheel size from 21 inches to 17 inches, I had to have a different bracket to make sure the new rotors, you know, fit correctly on, you know, to make sure the brake calipers fit correctly on the, the rotors. So it required a little bracket, whatever, just to make things fit, right? Apparently what had happened is I was doing a wheelie and then as soon as I came down and my front wheel hit the ground, um, a bolt, came out of the bracket and got stuck in the rotor and locked up my front wheel and flipped me over the handlebars at about 60-ish miles an hour. So to kind of recap, I was going down a frontage road next to a freeway and I was doing a wheelie, everything was fine, everything was going great. 
uh, put it down like normal. It wasn't, you know, I didn't have my fingers over the front brake, so it's not like I came down and just smashed the front brake, which no matter what you do, wheelies or whatever, never smash the front brake, obviously. So as soon as I came down and that front tire hit the ground, the bike just locked up and just flipped me right over the handlebars, landed, you know, basically front first, right? So I just kind of, you know, your, your natural instincts when you crash and you're going this way, right, is to kind of stick your hands out to brace yourself. So I'll put up pictures on screen now of like my crash and stuff like that. But here you can kind of see my wrist. My wrist was broken here. Um, basically my wrist was like a big zigzag um, after I was done tumbling. And that was my first time ever breaking a bone. So when I was done tumbling down the asphalt, I sat up and saw my wrist was, you know, in a zigzag and started to panic obviously because I had a, a broken arm, but I wasn't too, sounds dumb to say, I wasn't too worried because a broken wrist, a broken arm, those can get fixed. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it takes time, but I knew it could get fixed. So obviously it hurt. Um, although once you're done crashing, your adrenaline is going like crazy, right? So it's like, when I sat up after tumbling, I, what I remember is I, I didn't really feel any pain. Basically was done tumbling, sat up, saw my wrist and just kind of like, just kind of like braced it and just kind of held it because I knew that it was, you know, broken. So I didn't want it to like be flopping everywhere, obviously. Again, all I knew was that my wrist was broken. Um, I didn't know anything else. Going back to what I just said, how when you crash, you know, going forward, you try and brace yourself with your arms, but obviously your arms can't catch all of the weight, you know, that's, you know, falling. So I ended up hitting my chest and my stomach basically, and I fractured a few ribs, um, fractured a couple toes, that's minor stuff. But the big thing is I ruptured my spleen. Long story short, your spleen is one of the you know few things in your body that you don't technically need, right? Like you don't technically need your spleen, but it's obviously nice to have. You know, it's, it's put in your body for a reason, it does do something, right? So basically, along with all the other stuff, my, uh, my broken wrist, my fractured ribs, fractured toes, stuff like that, that was all stuff that could heal and would go back to normal. Big thing, like I just said, was um, rupturing the spleen. I'm not actually sure. I don't know if, you know, maybe if it was minor enough, if they could have just sewn it back up and had it working again. I don't know if it was, you know, too bad to where they couldn't fix it or if they always have to remove a spleen if it gets ruptured. But um, again, long story short, I lost my spleen in that motorcycle accident. So after my accident, I, you know, everyone always asks like, oh, oh did you still ride after your accident? Uh, did you give up? Did your parents make you quit? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I did still ride for a while, actually. So after my accident, so again, my accident was on a Husqvarna FE501S, which is a enduro bike from the factory, and I converted it to a supermoto. And that is what led me to my crash. So after my crash, I actually went out and bought a brand new Husqvarna 701 supermoto. Don't ask me why. I, <laughs> I thought it was the best idea at the time. I still wanted to make motorcycle videos. Um, from my understanding, I crashed because of the other bike was an enduro and I swapped it to supermoto. So I thought this one was a lot smarter because it came as a supermoto. So I thought there's no way I can crash, you know, or obviously not no way I can crash, but you know, me coming down from a wheelie and the front wheel locking up shouldn't happen because it comes from the factory from Husqvarna and KTM as a supermoto. I always thought that was the best option, you know, okay, I wanna still record videos. Um, obviously, the FE501S that I had that I crashed on is totaled, obviously. So, bought the 701 and I continued to make some videos. But then, kinda of recapping to what I said earlier, it just wasn't something that I felt like I could keep up for a long time. You know, motorcycles were cool. I had my fun with them, I still enjoy them. But I felt like I couldn't do social media or YouTube, you know, for a long, long time with motorcycles. That's just the way I personally looked at it. So although I was still making videos with my Husqvarna 701, 
I was constantly looking for new ways to make videos and new ways to grow my social media. Um, and obviously it's been a while since I uploaded a video and it just took me a long time to kind of realize what I wanted to record. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is it took me a long time to figure out what I was really passionate about. So after the motorcycle videos, I just didn't know what to record. I didn't know what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. You know, I like cars, I like motorcycles. Um, I'm a little white boy, I like golf too. But I feel like there's just not many good career paths that I want to do for the rest of my life that revolve around motorcycles, cars, or golf. So, so finally, after many years, obviously, I'm saying many years, a couple years, right? A couple years of just constantly thinking of what I can do is for social media and record. Um, and I realized after my accident and then I lost my spleen that I care a lot about my health now. So for people that don't know, your spleen, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but your spleen basically releases blood cells when you have an infection. So say so you get the flu or whatever kind of, you know, normal virus infection, whatever, something like that your spleen will release blood cells to help fight the infection. So it's basically your immune system. It's from what I was told, the research I did, um, I'm still very healthy, but I was told that I had to be a lot more cautious about you know, what I ate and just being a lot more aware of keeping my body healthy and how that would help me you know, just really just not get sick. So now, years down the road of not doing any motorcycle videos and just kind of thinking of really what I want to, you know, do for the rest of my life. Honestly, something just, like a little snap. Something just clicked with uh, going to the gym and just eating healthy. You know, people always, I was a normal person. I had many gym memberships and I would go for a month and I would stop. You know, everyone goes for a little bit, they enjoy it, they think they see a little bit of progress and they kind of enjoy it. But then for some reason one day they wake up and they just don't go to the gym anymore. I was one of those people. So obviously when I lost my spleen, I knew it was a big deal and they warned me about, oh wow, <laughs> about what could happen uh, if I get sick and stuff like that. I was lucky. As a kid, I never really got sick too often. Um, it kind of seemed like I didn't really get sick, but then when I did, I really got sick. Like it hit me twice as hard. I think I'm definitely lucky in that aspect where I don't have a spleen, but from what I heard, you don't necessarily get sick more often because you don't have a spleen. But when you do get sick, you just get sick, you know, maybe five times as hard because your body just can't fight off those infections. Your body can still build up antibodies and, and stuff like that to help you fight against further infections. But I didn't have the immune system to fight off the infection if I got it. I never really took it too, too seriously until about a year and a half ago when I got Valley Fever. Uh, I live in Arizona and apparently Valley Fever kinda lives within dust. Um, obviously in Arizona, we have a lot of uh, dust storms. We have desert where just dust is blowing around all the time, obviously. I got Valley Fever, which I got very, very sick from that. I remember I was at work one day and I felt like I was kind of about to pass out, basically. Um, my skin got all pale, uh, hearing started to go out, all the lights started to get really bright. And I knew I was getting sick, but I didn't know what it was. So sure enough, go to the hospital and I was diagnosed with Valley Fever. So basically Valley Fever is a fungus infection. So, or fungal infection. Um, so it landed on my lungs and basically led into pneumonia. So like I said, I never really took it crazy seriously until I got the Valley Fever and then that led into pneumonia and then all these things just started happening at once and things started to really click as doctors told me like I had 
First of all, I was on pills for about a year. Um, I'm off them now. But I was told numerous times that I may have to be on those valley fever pills for the rest of my life. And so when they told me that, that is kind of what really hit me. I was like, I'm like 21 years old and I might have to be on pills for the rest of my life because of this motorcycle accident uh, where I lost my spleen. So I am very lucky and a year later, uh, after taking those pills for again about a year, uh, the valley fever was completely gone. I had no more thing on my lungs, uh, it was apparently completely gone and pneumonia eventually went away. So that was a very scary time in my life. And so once all that happened, that is what really clicked and was like, okay, you need to take your health super seriously and just really just change your whole lifestyle. Cause I wasn't a very healthy kid. Kid growing up, had fun, go eat McDonald's, go at Panda Express. I still love Panda Express. Like, so like I said in the beginning of the video, how I was a normal person going, you know, I tried going to the gym, go for a month and just quit. Definitely this valley fever and pneumonia scare, that was the click that I needed to say, hey, you need to be healthy, you need to go to the gym. Your lungs and your heart, their muscles too, and they need to be worked out, you know. So now my whole life revolves around eating healthy and being active, uh, go to the gym, I try and go four to five days a week. I've uh, been doing that consistently for about a year or so. Then along with that click of realizing that I had to be super healthy now and go to the gym and eat super healthy, what a lot of people say when they start working out is you need to see a little bit of results. That is exactly what happened. So from where I was a couple years ago and basically my whole childhood growing up, I was never fat, right? I always had a little bit of extra fat, but I was never obese and I was never quote unquote fat, right? Just <laughs> being respectful growing up, I always just considered myself chubby, you know? And I was okay with that. It never really dawned on me uh, how healthy I wasn't or how unhealthy I was. But along with that click of valley fever and pneumonia, I also started to see a bunch of results that honestly happened kind of quick. And I was just so shocked that these things were happening already and I was, I honestly just love going to the gym. I started to see, you know, I started to see abs pop out. You start to see your bicep pop out. Just little things like that that you just, growing up, I never, never had abs. I never had a bicep to where I could flex and you can actually like see it, as dumb as that sounds. So once I started seeing results, I really enjoy going to the gym. So my whole life, as we stand right now, revolves around me eating healthy and going to the gym. That is something nowadays that I am very passionate about. So now, this is the new Husky Hooligan. No more motorcycle stuff. It's gonna be fitness content. And I understand the subscribers that I have now, I gained all of them from doing motorcycle content. People love to see wheelies, so do I. Like, I still love seeing that stuff. Sadly, I don't have a motorcycle anymore. Um, I'm not promising anything, but my dad has a bike and he lets me ride it. So maybe I can still do some motorcycle vlogs here and there. But from where I currently stand in life right now, my life revolves around being healthy. And so, like I said earlier in the video, I wanted to find ways to grow my social media, make videos, do YouTube. This to me now is kind of what I want to do. So now instead of a moto vlog, Husky Hooligan, you have a lifestyle slash fitness Husky Hooligan, which I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't actually know exactly what that means yet. Um, as far, as far as like lifestyle stuff, right? So like I'm gonna do fitness videos, uh, hopefully I can kind of record in the gym, do some stuff in there, um, eating, doing challenges, stuff like that. And I really just wanna go into doing more of a lifestyle uh, fitness vlog kind of. So again, my life revolves around fitness and being healthy. So I'm gonna kind of bring you along and kind of hopefully help you guys get some motivation to kind of see where I came from. So that is the direction that I want to take this channel. So, but hear me out. This is 
This is just what I want to do with the rest of my life. Fitness. But, so now this, this is what I'm passionate about now and this is how I want to continue to grow my channel is through fitness and health, nutrition, and just lifestyle videos. So with that being said, I wanna end it off here basically and just say that I know it's not gonna be the most entertaining video, but I had to put this out first to kinda show where I came from with the motorcycle stuff, how it affected me, and where I plan to go to now, you know, how I plan to continue to grow this channel. So those of you that have stuck around through all of this and enjoyed my motorcycle stuff, and hopefully we'll enjoy this new stuff. I appreciate the hell out of you. With that, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.